Hello, and welcome to Take This TV, the television book club podcast, where each week we talk about an episode or two of our favorite shows with our friends in the fandom. Hello, friends in the fandom. Welcome. <laughs> I'm Carmen Askerdies, and I'm joined as always by the wonderful Kimberly Woods. Hello. Hello, hot potatoes. This season, we're watching Shogun. Ooh, and today we are on episode nine. It's called Crimson Sky. Mariko mm. arrives in Osaka for the fight of her life. Blackthorn and Yabushige scramble to save their own heads as their options dwindle. And this is your warning right now. If you are not caught up to episode nine, please pause, come back, and join us because there will be spoilers ahead. Spoilers. Yarr. Yeah. There will be spoilers. Maybe. There will be spoilers ahead. So let's get into this one, Carmen. This was an intense episode. Oh my gosh. The whole episode, I was on the edge of my seat, just like, please let Mariko make it out of here alive. Um, I got to say, <laughs> after this episode ended, I feel like I've started to, like, I was, I was always on Toronaga's side. But now I'm kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you ready to play your part, Mariko? It's kind of, and it's also just sad because it's like... I get it. The, like, she fulfilled her purpose. Like, Mariko has always been a character that talks about death and life kind of as the same thing. Like, you know, when she was talking about earthquakes happen and, you know, that's just part of life. Um, and it feels like this is what she was meant to do. Her father left her alive for this purpose. Tornaga had given her another reason to live, to reclaim her purpose. So it seemed like... It was going to be leading up to this, but at the same time, I still didn't want that to be the answer. Yeah. I didn't want it to be true. I wanted I wanted something else. And so it was too. really sad. I, I love <laughs> the pacing and the direction of this episode because there's so many moments where you think, oh, this is it. Mariko's going to bite it. But then she doesn't. Um, and then you kind of, it keeps you on the edge of your seat because I feel like every we all were kind of under the impression of like, well... Hiramatsu died last time. There's only two episodes left. Mariko's going into the Viper's Nest. She's probably not going to make it. But I, I feel like they kept the tension up the whole time just by really smart choices with the blocking and editing and pacing of the story. And like when Mariko goes back to her room and someone opens the door, I, I was like, I was for sure it was going to be Yabushige, like coming to assassinate her. But it was Blackthorn. And I was like, woo! <laughs> I thought that was gonna be it. <laughs> oh my gosh! I I loved getting her, I, getting to see her step into this role this episode. Like some of the scenes where she was standing up, you know, to the council were some of my favorite scenes. Um, where she got to say, you know, I am the daughter of a catchy. I won't be confined or be held captive. And, like, sending a message just in her stance. And so much so that, you know, afterwards, Jabushige and <laughs> and Blackthorn are like, what's going on? What does he have? What is, what does is, what is Tornaga have planned? Like, let me know. Um, but just seeing how powerful she was in those moments and how um, unflinching she was and taking on this, like, effort in this role was really, really cool. And Anna Sawai is an amazing actress, so it was so much fun to watch. Oh, she was so powerful, not just in this in this episode, but in the whole show. She's definitely mm -hmm. been one of the best parts of it. And I that scene where she defies uh, Ishido in front of everyone, I love it so much. I mean, like, it was such a powerful moment because we've seen her be so reserved, keep her up her eightfold fence, be really polite the whole time. And I feel like she she still was very polite. She was just very much like following the etiquette and the rules to a T. Yeah. Like. And to a point where she's being defiant. And I love that because it's like she doesn't sacrifice who she is. But at the same time, she's um, doing what needs to be done for herself and also for her plan for Toronaga. I thought that was powerful. And in true bard fashion, <laughs> she gets to uh, say a poem because when she's talking to the council, Ochiba is there. And this is the first time they've seen each other in decades and Ochiba is remembering fondly how they used to have these poetry battles and has asked Mariko to, you know, say the first line of a poem. 
And Mariko, because she's not going to stay around, is like, ah, oh, here's the first line right now. Um, and she says, while the snow remains veiled in the haze of cold evening, a leafless branch, which is referring directly to Ochiba, which means fallen leaves. And so I love that that was kind of like a hidden message in a way for like seeing Ochiba. And it's like during this whole episode, these two friends who loved each other and comforted each other amidst the battles of their fathers are now like trying to get the other one to like fold in a way. Cause it's like, you know, Mariko's doing all these things and she's like, Ochiba, you can stop it. And Ochiba's like, I don't have power. Which I was kind of surprised by. But it points out again, like Marika was saying, she might just be most fearful about her son. And it's not about Tornaga necessarily. But just that fact that they were trying to like uh, play the game and outplay each other and hoping maybe one of them would like not go all the way to the edge. Yeah. There's, yeah. I, I love the scene where, where they finally have a moment to talk alone. <laughs> Blackthorn is there as, as Mariko's cover and she's like she's invited us here so that we could let us speak or whatever to Blackthorn and what I love the most about that scene is that like I think that it's, it's, it's really rare in a lot of shows where we have moments where characters are like really vulnerable and honest about like caring about one another and mm-hmm. I love that we really see that like Ochiba loves Mariko like a Mariba. sister Mariba, like in my mind, it's still her. a little ship, though. I think it might be more than the sister. She said, "You were, you were my happiness." And oh so, damn! You know what? I'm, I'm still having the little like that might be her secret heart in this I, world. I'm on the Mariba train, <laughs> and I just, I love that they have this moment together, and like we get to see how much that they mean for each other, and like we, we've seen Lady Ochiba play the game just like Lord Tornaga. Um, since she first came onto the show. And now we get this moment to see this other side of her. And I feel like more of her true self. Um, mm-hmm. And it's interesting that she makes a plea to Mariko to like, let this go. Mm-hmm. And then Mariko tells her that like, you have the power to stop this right now. Um, because she knows that Ishido is like, you know, a pawn for Ochiba. Um, and yeah, I feel like, I wonder, because we we have that scene with the council and Lady Oshiba kind of breaks it down for, for them about like, well, if you let Mariko live, and this is what happens if she dies, this is what happens. Um, and I feel like bringing in the Shinobi was something that maybe Ishido did on the sly, on his own. Mm-hmm. Do you think that Lady Oshiba was involved in that? Or do you think that was like an Ishido? I feel move? like that was kind of his move. Yeah. <sighs> I really wanted during that scene to be for there to be some sort of out. Like maybe this is where Ochiba, you know, a lot like allies herself with Tornaga or I don't know, something. Like maybe she can flip sides here. Like th- maybe this is our last hope, like this this moment with these two friends. And then when it doesn't happen, it's just like, okay, nope, she's going to be true to her promise. She's gonna, you know, commit suicide by sunset. Um Speaking of which, that scene where she goes towards the gates was another one of my favorite scenes. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's so yeah. badass. <laughs> so incredible. Uh, she's fighting. Well, her guys are fighting their way first, and then they all fall. And then Mariko takes up the spear herself and starts taking some guys down um, until at some point she can't get through them. And I feel like it's like... What she says, like, I can't get past all these men, (laughs) is such a poignant, like, you know, statement. First of all, in that sort of time, um, the role of women during that time and just like, ah, it's just frustrating, right? Because we have Mariko, who's so powerful, and Ochiba, who should be running things. And they're surrounded by all these guys in the middle of the wars that they've started. They're just carbon. I don't know. Yeah. It's, well, I mean, it I just says so love, much. Like, I love that Mariko, she she tells Blackthorn, first of all, she's like, don't interfere. Like, mm-hmm. just stay out of this. And I love that we have that moment where uh, it seems like because all of her troops have been killed, that she's lost, there's no hope left. And then when she's fighting herself, 
Like we've never seen her openly display her combat skills before. And so just like seeing her fight in front of everybody, just like pulling her full self on display like that, I thought was such a powerful moment because I mean, this whole episode really feels like mask off for Mariko, which is so <laughs> wild because uh, she's been so covert yeah. this whole time. But I love that, like, I love that these kind of stories where where we see the cost of, of like, doing the right thing in heroism because, unfortunately, in the real world, we kill heroes. And I think that, like, even the people that she was with, they all knew that they were going to die, but they face it with bravery. And I feel like Mariko fully knew that, like, this is this could be the end of her life and We've always seen her like face that with with bravery and and with uh, resolve. So I thought that was a really powerful powerful sequence, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved um, Ochiba watching under the cover of her, <laughs> like peeking down. And I was like, I, I felt in a way sh- that again, oh, I was hoping Ochiba would maybe take something from that statement mm. and claim her power more i mean we'll see we'll see what happens now that especially like if Ish, if it was ishido's decision to send his men at the end and it wasn't necessarily ochiba running that like maybe she'll see maybe that will be enough for her to see or maybe something will get through to her we'll see i, I mean i'm curious there's only one episode left so i'm like what is gonna happen i don't know can, can i also say one of my favorite Another one of my favorite parts of this episode was when it comes down to the line. Sunset is happening. Uh, you know, Mariko is prepared to commit suicide. She's supposed to be being seconded by Kiyama, who then suddenly, like, doesn't show up. And at first I was like, okay, does Yabushige have something to do with this? Because mm. right before he had just been, like, speaking with one of Ishido's men who was like, okay, Ishido has a deal for you will spare your life so you know there's nobody to second her nobody's stepping up to second her and it looks like she's still gonna just have to do this by herself without anybody like there to back her up and then Anjin steps up and is willing to do it for her and says you know if I've already seen hell um you just keep it you know keep it from your mind it's okay the fact that she had been living with a husband who was forcing her to live and indeed in that sense wasn't even letting her live and then to have this guy who's like i see you i'm here for your plan if this is what you want i'm all for it like you know i'm not gonna keep that from you was a nice like full circle moment. that moment absolutely wrecked me i was like <laughs> I was wrecked in that moment because I was like, I couldn't, man. I was I, yeah. honestly, if I was Blackthorn, I'd be like, I'm gonna colonize this whole fucking country. I'm gonna go back to my <laughs> queen and get a bunch of ships, and I'm killing everybody. Like, if you kill my lady, like everybody's gonna die. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I, man, like I think that like we see Blackthorn truly express his love for her in that moment because he knows yeah. what this means to her, and we do have that the scene prior to this where he tries to convince her not to go through with it. And he tells her that if you don't want to live for anything else, will you live for me? And I was like, oh, my heart, Mari Thorne. <laughs> I was like, Blackthorn, at this point, she's already been confronted by her son and, you know, told him he was she was still going to do it. So not going to change for you. No, I fully forgot she had a son <laughs> also. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like you won't be my mom anymore it's like ooh, you're too taking too much after your father oh my gosh if i would have said something <laughs> like that to my mom she would have slapped the black off me I like, what <laughs> what boy <laughs> but yeah no i if he was definitely been influenced by being around ishido yeah. and like being around those people so um I, I i thought it was pretty intense that he was there when Mariko was about to commit suicide, and I was like, "Dang, he yeah. has to watch his mom do that!" Like that's intense. I know. But, uh, but they took us up into that moment where they shut the screen, um, and then finally, Ishido, Ishido charges in and claims, "You know, fine, I'll give you the permits to leave." <laughs> As soon as he said that, and then all the other people were like, what about us? What about us? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, yeah, just apply for a permit, and it's fine. Nobody's a prisoner here. You disrespect sure. the 
Lord's uh, hospitality. And I was like, liar. <laughs> he's such a liar. <laughs> and they should have known. I was like, he's up to something, man. But yeah, it, it feels like a small victory for our crew. Yeah. I was so happy at that moment. And then I was like, and now pillow? <laughs> now pillow. <laughs> and of course, they didn't get the pillow. So at least I got one last pillow. One last night to go. <laughs> I also like... <laughs> Um, 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 Blackthorn offers his hand to Mariko in front of everybody and she accepts it to help him up, to help her up. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like it's been like everybody's been like, Ooh, what's happening? But I feel like at this point, they were just kind of like, Look, <laughs> it's all out there. And I mean, they come out of the room together, uh, when yeah. the attack happens. So, um, this was also the first time when they get attacked that we see Blackthorn fire his pistol. And I was like, I don't know anything about ancient weaponry, but what kind of pistol is that? And we see him like trying to reload it. And I was like, oh, you might as well pick up a sword. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. He starts, and then he whacks somebody with it at some point. <laughs> like <laughs> using it like a bat, yeah. <laughs> it was interesting, too, that we got a glimpse a little bit more into Mariko's relationship with religion. Hmm. and Catholicism because in the beginning of the episode we get a flashback and we kind of learn that she's been trying to run away from home like this is the third time she's been running away from home in the snow and wants to kill herself and then she meets Alvito and he kind of gives her the cross to hold on to for the times when she doesn't have words and mm -hmm. so it's like the fact that she does take comfort in that because sometimes I wasn't sure. It was like, is she having a secret heart where she doesn't really believe in this? But it seems like, yes, like it did get her through some of those dark times. And here at the end, when she's about to commit suicide and she has to give up the cross, it seems like a big moment for her. Yeah. And she does have that that final prayer with uh, Martine, mm -hmm. with Alvito. And uh, <laughs> he's like, Lady Maria, let me pray for you. <laughs> I was like, hey, man, I don't like that guy. He's <laughs> Yeah. calling her Lady Maria and stuff. And I'm like, bro, you speak the language. Call her Mariko. <laughs> <laughs> so the colonizer. But anyway, <laughs> as she prays with him. And I, I think that, like, I love the, the like, strategy that they have and, and like, trying to force the division between Ishido and some of the other council members by... Um, getting the church involved with like Mariko con essentially condemning her soul if she commits suicide because she's a Christian. So mm -hmm. I, I thought that was a yeah. really, really interesting thing. Um, and then our boy Yabushige. Uh, Yabushige. I was so angry at him. <laughs> the whole oh time. Oh Yabushige has been kind of like the lovable fool to us the whole time. Yeah. He crossed the line this episode though. He did. There's no going back. He has to die now. Sense. he does and i mean like he i feel like the whole time toranaga's kind of let yabashige know that like we're on to you and it, it feels like you know sort of the the like tale is oldest time of like these kind of loose end like kind of like char dodgy characters and, and they kind of get overlooked by whoever the hero is and it ends up costing them so um yeah yabushige lets the shinobi in and they start like killing everybody, which like absolutely wild. Um, and in the end, when they're like in that safe house and, and Blackthorn is trying to get Yabushige to help him block the door and he won't do it. I was like, come on, Blackthorn. <laughs> that's weird, man. Yeah. Like, that's weird, right? <laughs> yeah. but I, don't, I don't know if he picked up that Yabushige was in, was in on it. I'm sure he will. Yabushige is not a good liar. Yeah. <laughs> I think he'll show himself in some way. They'll see through him. And but, um, yeah, Mariko yeah. in true fashion was like, I'm going to use this death as a protest against Ishido and everybody here who's going to die. We'll see what this death means. Um, so she's still, in a way, is using her death to kind of stoke this revolution. Oh, Mariko becoming a martyr. Yep. I was like, I, I like, oh, man, I, in my head when, when Blackthorn was like, get away from the door, get away from the door. I was like, what's going to happen? Yeah, <laughs> I, me too. I was like, what's going on? I forgot about the cannons or whatever. And then when the, when the door blows up, 
I literally was screaming like, oh my God. So I was like, maybe, maybe she's okay. <laughs> maybe she's just hurt. So I don't know. We'll see. But uh, it does not looking good, honestly. No, it's really sad. And also it's like, I was wondering, let's say this didn't happen and they got the permits and got to go back to Tornaga. Then what would happen as far as narrative? It's like, I feel like this kind of needed to happen in some way in order for this war. So now he has reason to like attack because, you know, it's clear that Ishido was holding people captive and violating, you know, laws or whatever. He needs a reason to attack. I feel like, so I feel like Toranaga's whole deal of like, I don't want to like, you know, burn the city to the ground, destroy everything we build. I don't want innocent people to die. It's like so many people have died. Like all of those soldiers that died that were protecting Mariko, do their lives not matter? Like does Mariko's life not matter? Does your best friend's life not matter? Like I feel like, that's why I said I feel like I'm not, I don't know. I don't know if I'm fully on Toronaga's side anymore because I'm like, dude, just like, just just kill the people who need to die. Like, just <laughs> do it. You have the power to do it. Kill your brother. Kill all these other people. Um, do you so still I, think he's Ned Stark? No, no. I feel like he's, uh, <laughs> I feel like he's like uh, more of like a Daenerys now. <laughs> um, which, which would have. The Lacaris. Like, it's like, gonna yeah, come like she should have just burned <laughs> the whole come. city down. Everyone's like, oh, what about the people? We'll we'll put up a moral <laughs> murals later for them. Like <laughs> kill the people who need killing. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, so I we'll I see truly, what happens. I mean, what happens to Blackthorn now? Because she was his translator, so it's like he's kind of he's gonna rage. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Now I'm he can like, rage too. <laughs> come on, Blackthorn. <laughs> come on, Blackthorn. Yeah. He's got to find his purpose now. He's What's it gonna be? Gonna be? Is he going to join the church? Are, are he and Martine going to team up? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, my we'll God. But, I mean, I still love we'll the show. We'll see. This episode was devastating. But I love it was the devastating. Show. And what about that other line, Carmen? Death is not surrender. Flowers are only flowers because they fall. So beautiful. When she said that, I was like, it's a wrap. You can't have a character say something like that and then not die. Like, was she going to say something like that and then live? And then the next episode, she, like, catches a straight arrow. It's like, now she has to die. <laughs> yeah. It was beautiful, though. Oh, it was beautiful. She was a beautiful flower. I'm sad right, she's, she's gone. Maybe Crimson Sky! Is Crimson not- Sky! <laughs> Oh, I wish there wasn't just one episode because I could just watch the show forever. It's great. It's really great. Ah, well, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, don't forget, we're at Take This TV on TikTok and Instagram. Leave us a comment. We're also on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. So leave us a review. And remember, it's dangerous to watch TV alone. <laughs>